It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so maybe we'll talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we're reviewing the first season of X-Men 97, Mike. Well, you're back, you were out, so now we can talk X-Men 97, uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk that at the end of the show. Uh, as I told you on Monday, I think we told everyone last week on the show, get your Deadpool and Wolverine tickets quick. These are selling out very quickly. I don't know. Um, I, I went to my favorite theater in my normal seats. That whole row was booked up already, and I was like maybe 30 minutes behind. So, um, <laughs> Well, we don't, have it, we don't have it in the show notes this week, but maybe people are using the money they saved on not going to Furiosa for oh, yeah. these Deadpool tickets. That's, that's, that's true. <laughs> well, nobody went anywhere this weekend, but but that's, that's something we can, we can talk about here kind of at the top of the show. Uh, I've got a leaked um, plot synopsis for Venom: The Last Dance, and it's definitely oh, going to go out with a bang, man. Give I'm, it, gonna talk give about it this. to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and more, and more. Welcome back, welcome back to the show this week. Yes, thank you. the 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 baby shower went off well last week, which is why I was not on the show. So now I'm excited to be back. We can talk about X Men '97. Luckily, it wasn't spoiled for me in any way. Mm-hmm. Uh, though it, I, this wasn't really like a spoilery show in a way. Like I know there are like twists and turns, but for some reason, I feel like no matter what anyone would tell you, like there's still so much to enjoy in this show. Um, yeah. That yeah, I, I got lucky there. Uh, but Chris, I wasn't gonna let this slide. Just before you started recording, mm-hmm. uh, you started uh, saying that you are trying to purchase an electric gr- yeah, griddle yeah. Yeah, so you can cook breakfast foods in mass. And I bet you thought I would have no anecdote or follow. No, absolutely to that. no, no. It, I, I knew you wrong. would, but I do because but... just before we started recording the yeah. podcast, my wife leans over to me and she goes, "Hey, babe," and I was like, "Yeah." She's like. Do you want a shop vac? And I was like, mm. say less. Of course I want a shop yeah. vac. <laughs> so I think somebody was giving one of those away on our local buy nothing group. So you'll get an electric griddle. Yeah. I'll get a shop vac. We'll all start having kids. And then this yeah. will be the one hour a week <laughs> where, right. where we act like we're not adults. Where we're not adults. <laughs> well, we kind of are adults. And I think a lot of people would appreciate our talks about griddles and shop vacs. Uh, because you, you never know when you're going to need those, right? Uh, you get to a certain mm-hmm. point, you're like, man, I wish I had a shop vac. Um, so it, it's just, it's kind of funny, but the electric griddle thing is we have a, we have a, a stove. Um, well, I say it's new. I've been to my house three years today, actually. And, um, uh, it, and what's crazy is, you know, my stove is great. We have this glass top, all this fun stuff, but like when you're trying to cook breakfast, you're like juggling so many different pans across the stove top. I'm like, I just want one nice flat surface with this. And the one I'm looking up, Mike, you'll appreciate this is a three-in-one griddle. It's got the grill racks on one side, the flat space on the other. Um, so you can oh, actually – so you can, like, have either the grill marks or the, the, the flat griddle thing. Um, and then you just take those off, put them in the dishwasher, and the griddle is so clean have, and everything's good. Do you have a, a cabinet in the kitchen that will be tribute to oh, hold uh, on to this griddle? Absolutely. Uh, we actually uh, – so we have a laundry room next – our laundry room is next to our kitchen at the end of it, and it's got two closets in there. One is the cleaning supplies closet. One is the food supplies closet, like where the air fryer lives, uh, you know, the um, instant pot, and then now the, the griddle will live next to it. So, you know, you got the check boxes of all these uh, fancy home appliances that we didn't have <laughs> growing up. Uh for that but yeah absolutely we have a place for that to live now your shot vac are you are you are you sweeping up a lot of stuff with a shot vac that's the question i have for you i just didn't imagine you having a use for one you um, know what when i have it i will find uses for sure uh I, there i always remember my dad using them in almost emergency situations like something's backing up like you can suck up water with a shot vac which is yeah. something that i think some people might not know so like if you have like a toilet backing up or you have like a sink backing up and that water needs to go somewhere that's when you run for the shop vac uh we have like the original version of the dyson mm-hmm. that we got years and years and years ago off of woot.com if anyone remembers woot.com 
Uh, and this thing is a workhorse. The Dyson is amazing. You can rip it down to all of its base components and clean it and put it back together. It's like truly feels like a object that no longer gets made anymore. Something made to be like replaced and cleaned and fixed and repaired. Uh, but even like at its like best, it still can't quite get the real stuck in stuff that like might oh, be in yeah. your like cars upholstery. Uh, like we had a whole bunch of stuff in my wife's trunk that was like stuck to all these fibers. So it's like, man, if we had a shop vac. We need that horsepower. Oh, we yeah. need that suction boy. Oh yeah. Well, and, and I tell you, we, we had a, uh, we had two shop vacs for a little bit and it's great whenever we were redoing our basement. Um, and, uh, you know, whenever you just have all that dust and like debris from like cutting things, wood, concrete, taking up mm-hmm. the old carpet, everything that was just underneath that old carpet. Um, it, it, it was just, it was just, uh, it was just great to have. So I, I didn't imagine you. Um, I just didn't know. Um, I couldn't remember. Uh, well, you're going to have that. to reframe the way that you look at your co-host of Superhero Slate. Yeah. He is a shop vac kind of guy sometimes. Yeah, so well, I know that's kind of hard to imagine, Chris, but yeah. It's true. Um, so when I come out next month, you're going to show me what you do with it. Oh, yeah. Chris, we're going to get all up in that shop vac. It will be not safe for work. Okay. Uh, but speaking of not safe, Chris, you survived tornadoes this weekend, and we have been blessed by Mother Nature to record this podcast because somehow you still have yeah. internet and you still have electricity. That's right. So yeah, there were two, I don't know how you manage that. There were several <laughs> tornadoes coming across the Midwest yesterday. Once in the morning, knocked out some tree stuff. I showed you photos. Power was out uh, on and off all day. It was, it was wild. Um, and then... Um, you know, last evening, last year, even that came on. There was a YouTube channel uh, that I sent to you guys. That was like this guy. That's all he does is sit there on YouTube and like updates people and has people like out in the storms. It was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, with, I, with... I clicked into that link. That guy has taken a master class in vamping because yeah. he's essentially looking at the same radar for you know ten minutes at a time. You know, things occasionally yeah. update. So he's kind of just doing like the weather channel strategy of just recycling the same information over and over because pe- new people are popping in and out of it all the time. So, but that is a skill. I'm not saying yeah. that's a bad thing. I'm like, we try our best sometimes to vamp on this show where I'll get like a secret message from Chris yeah. saying like something has fallen in my house. I have yeah. to make sure everyone's still alive. Uh, vamp yeah. for sixty seconds, and I'm like, oh boy, yeah. here we go. Yeah. yeah. And that guy's out here doing it for hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and he's just like, it, I, what I appreciate about him, he had like a, a, the most nonchalant personality either, right? Like he was just like, just like giving updates. Like, yeah, then we got stories. Look at this. This is where the thing is. I'm like, he's like a weatherman, like on the local news would have so much energy and hype and be like, you know, like not yelling, but you know what I'm saying? Like kind of like Tom Cruise jumping up and down on the couch when a tornado is coming through. Mm-hmm. And uh, th- this guy was just so chill. So it was great, but I'm, I'm doing great. Everything's fine. Uh, I was going to mow my lawn today because it's Memorial Day here. Uh, we're recording on Monday, and the weather's really nice. But then I went outside, and you could hear that squishy ground underneath your feet. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. I think, I think I'll hold off for a bit. But, yeah. um, I, I am curious, though, because it wasn't just like a tornado that kind of like hit your area. It was like this huge cell mm-hmm. moving across the middle of the country. And I, I am curious if it had any sort of effect on the box office for uh, Furiosa yeah. because um, – I didn't get a chance to go see it this weekend. I would like to see it. I right. brought up rewatching Fury Road on the show a few weeks back. Uh, so a fan it, of this kind of it, new yeah. invigoration of the franchise, you there, know. There are, there are, there are, I'm going to say there are three things to me that make this – because I want to watch it too. We both want to watch it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the weather would have absolutely prevented me from seeing it yesterday. Last time I went to a movie – it had a tornado warning was Mario brothers. And they had to like shut the movie down in the middle of it. So I, I had to leave in the middle of super Mario brothers uh, when it came out. Uh, and so I just, I just don't do it. Even though I live one stop by the way, it's still not going to gonna risk that. So yesterday, right out today's actually Memorial day. And I'm like, I could, you know, couldn't find time, but I'm, I'm here recording with you, Mike. And I, I'd much rather do that uh, than, than go to the movie theaters. But the third thing I would say that has kind of got me things like what I didn't expect. And it's not this movie. It's actually the fall guy movie that came out three mm-hmm. weeks ago is already on streaming why is that movie that did well already on streaming? is it really already on are you serious it's, on, it's, it's on, already on it's streaming on, it's on pay pay streaming P- pvod yeah. why like honestly it's crazy so like i wasn't expecting to talk so much about uh furiosa on the podcast this week but it's so funny because it tees into so many different things yeah um like it, it's memorial weekend um 
uh, the wife and I, we just canceled our Cinemark Movie Club um, membership because mm-hmm. it was coming up on a year and we're about to have a baby. We're going to be going to the movies a lot less coming up. So no reason to hold on to it. But also there haven't been a whole lot of movies before we canceled that we went to go see because we have eight credits remaining that luckily we still get to use. Like I've technically yeah. paid for them. So even though I've canceled the service, I have eight free movie tickets to use. Um, so we were ready to go to our local Cinemark and we, first I wanted to see the fall guy, um, not in our local theater. Uh, we wanted, my wife really wanted to see the movie, uh, babes, uh, not in our local Cinemark theater because our theater is on like more of the medium to small size. The one that we like to go to that has all of the, um, luxury reclining loungers, yep. uh, cause it was just full of like Garfield and Furiosa yep. and there's something else I think that just came out that was in there too but like we couldn't go see these movies that had like just come out like babes just came out the fall guy like like one or two weeks ago so it's on, it was it's crazy. On the third week for the fall guy and then it came out on pvod this week i'm like what the hell happened so yeah, i don't i don't we, think i don't think it's furiosa's fault that it came out on pvd i think people are now be like oh they'll just be on streaming in two weeks like yeah but it, it seems like the the decline of not even decline because it hasn't even really gotten started. The Furious a box office to me just seems like a culmination of a lot of things, which is why it's maybe hard to pinpoint like who did what wrong. No, no, like, no, nobody nobody did anything wrong. The movie is being reviewed very well. Nobody mm-hmm. did anything wrong. They're, they're, the other part of this is this is a, a uh, the culmination or I guess the first wave of the strikes last year. Right? Remember the strikes that pushed everything back a little bit. No one thought Furiosa would be a tentpole summer movie at all last year. Like, that was not it. Last year, it was going to be a Marvel movie, right? We were going to have a Marvel May movie and then uh, a Marvel summer movie. And they literally everybody has moved everything wild, like wildly through the end of the year, through next year. So Furiosa wasn't supposed to be the tentpole movie that everyone was banking on it to be because even you go look at Mad Max Fury Road, it did not do well in the box office. It like did okay. It was the the after release where everyone really started to come to watch that movie. So Yeah, I think it, it was like the word of mouth that, that got that first yeah. one to grow. And I actually can't even remember necessarily what drove me to go see yeah. Fury Road in theaters because I wasn't I didn't really grow up with the Mad Max franchise. So it probably was the word of mouth that was like, oh, this movie is really crazy. I need to go see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I think you got it uh, right there, like high expectations for this movie that I still think is relatively niche. I, yeah. I understand the the other movie was very widely acclaimed. A lot of people loved it. This uh, movie has like stars in it as well. But I I just don't think people I don't think there was an appetite for a prequel of it necessarily. I, so a lot, well, like, I agree. Like, I, I've seen the good reviews as well, yeah. but like I don't think it has the juice to get people to the theater as much it, as they thought it would. I think it could have if anything else had already got people going to the theaters. This is not like this is like no one. None of these movies have really got anyone into the theaters this year. Right. So like what is what is that kickstart what is the engine that's like oh i want to go to the movie that's a good movie i had a good time i remember that i'm gonna go see another good movie at the theater there was none of that kickstart this summer right it just kind of came through like i'm not rushing out to see kingdom of the planet of the apes um i don't know was if the other movie you were thinking of that came out recently yeah that, that yeah that was the other one like yeah. if no one came to see if the was it inside out two isn't until june deadpool and wolverine which is our first topic is in july so I don't know if there was that, that kickstart was just never there. And again, Furiosa is not a tent. This was never meant to be a tentpole blockbuster film. It's, it is, as you said, it just needs to break even. But I'm I'm also going to say on the flip side of that, you can't write a movie off the first weekend right now. Like like literally the, the fault of people saying this movie flopped. It didn't have a good opening weekend. We'll start giving it legs, right? Don't put it on streaming in two weeks because that's what people are have now been trained to do. Make them wait six months, and they'll probably go see it through word of mouth, like the original Mad Max Fury or yeah. Fury Road. It is pretty wild that I, that you're telling me right now that I can pay to watch the Fall Guy at home because since we had to go to a different movie theater this weekend, we ended up going to see uh, the new Alana Glazer movie, Babes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that cost me eighteen ninety nine per ticket. <laughs> so that's like 40 bucks to go see that movie in our local AMC, which we would have saved a lot more if we could have gone to our Cinemark. 
So that's a whole nother factor as well. Like I'm guessing the VOD on the fall guy is what probably 20 bucks. Isn't that usually what fall, what like premium it, kind of VOD costs now? Yeah, it, it could be. The other movie is challengers is already on streaming as well. Yeah. The, that, that, that was just in the theaters not too long ago. April 26th. So, yeah. I'm looking all these up. I'm like, these are all now on PVOD uh, within two to three weeks right now. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of discussion out there on the internet just right now. And it's just been interesting to me yeah. of people trying to figure out like, like you're saying, Chris, why hasn't the kind of like the, the movie box office started? What's going to kickstart it? You know, we yeah. have a big movie to talk about here at the top of the show here in a minute. Right. Uh, but if you wanted to go smaller, much, much, much smaller, we did go to the theater this weekend to go watch uh, Babes, which was very topical for my wife and I because it's all about um, uh, two friends kind of going through different stages of having kids and i thought it was really really funny uh obviously i related to a lot in it specifically right now in my life but i think even on its own merit it was pretty hilarious uh but this does kind of also scream movie that probably won't be in theaters long and you'll be seeing like streaming on like hulu or something uh not too long but you know if you needed to go check it out um i've noticed there's a lot of um there's a lot of activities that seem to uh, unite uh, pregnant women in one location now in my life. You know, you go to pregnancy classes, you're surrounded by pregnant people. You go to these um, like infant CPR classes surrounded by pregnant people. You go to a opening weekend of a movie that's all about uh, having a baby. Uh, there's pregnant women around you. So uh, that's what my life is right now, Chris. I'm mm-hmm. surrounded by uh, bumps. They're all over. And You're I couldn't solid. even es- I couldn't even escape uh, pregnancy when I finally got around to watching the Dune movies yesterday. Yeah. I watched both of them back to back. Five hours of that's Dune. A, that's a lot. That's a <laughs> lot of Dune. But do you see why I would tell you not to watch the first one until the second one came out? Because of where yes, it is? yeah. I, and honestly, I, <laughs> I I I think I would tell people after watching these two, maybe just wait until there's a third one. I don't know if these are gonna have an ending at any point in time. So I uh, I what, did do a little bit of research, and I know yeah. it's a book series. There's there's like tons of books, but like at what point is like is there going to be like a definitive kind of ending? Like when is Timothy Chalamet going to be out of the picture and we can kind of close the chapter of the Dune franchise? Well, what's great is like, again, you said, but like the first book does end where that one ends. So they, they end there. There are differences. The endings are different than the books, but that is very well where, where the other ends. The second one, um, it's not heretics of Dune. Um, it might be the second one. The second book, fallout book, is much smaller and deals with that fallout before that, and then you get to Children of Dune. But like, it, it does follow the books pretty pretty closely. If you're like, I want to read the first book and I want to watch the movies that coordinate that, these two would do it. If you keep going, you're going to get way lost. I think so. Um, they do they do a good job. But but did you have a good time with it? That that's the question. You know, because I know you're not you're not much of a Dune person. Like this is like maybe your yeah. first uh, experience with the Dune world. Yeah. Exactly. I, I've had mixed experiences with it. Um, the wife couldn't hang. Uh, she agreed to watch part one with me, but uh, kind of lost the thread and got bored partway through it. And I don't necessarily blame her. Uh, there's a lot in here to enjoy, uh, even kind of like outside the plot or the story. I, I love the visual development and the prop mm-hmm. design and all of the fun like gadgets that you can tell there was a lot of money and time spent concentrating on things that had like nothing to do with like the big selling points that you would like see on the poster right uh like just the little like the just like the the fine detail in like the thopters or the shields or like all of these like little gadgets i love the huge um spice harvesters those things were so cool and like not only did they like design one spice harvester but they every like thing has two versions of it because you had like these two competing houses that both harvested on Arrakis yeah. and they had their own kind of visual design because they're, they're their own great families from their own planets. So you had, you know, um, uh, Timothy Chalamet's family. I cannot keep the track Atre- of all the Atre- names. The, the Atreides. Which the Atreides, the guys, that right. Yeah. They kind of had that kind of Navy kind of vibe to their outfits and their, you know, machinery. Whereas the Har- Har- Harkonnens, Harkonnens. Harkonnens yeah. uh, felt like they're like they're more like circular. They're a little bit more alien in their their it was, visual yeah, design. It was very black leather, 
bulbous, yeah, kind of weirdly sexual, but not kind of things. Along the yeah, way, yeah, and like in Skarsgård, like going through like this just kind of like grotesque transformation throughout the series where he's like on life support he's like in chocolate pudding half of the movie Mm -hmm. and then when they go back to their planet it's like in black and white and but it almost worked well it didn't i didn't necessarily feel like they were going for like oh just the fun gimmick of let's go black and white i could almost imagine like oh maybe their atmosphere on their planet has some sort of like polarization and everything just like looks black and white they filmed that in infrared uh, to get that, that oh. look, it's not just a, a black and white filter because it, it doesn't feel black and white, right? Like it's like yeah, it's a weirdly starkly contrast, but but it's like an infrared filter, I think, over everything with that. Yeah, I just so everything, all of the basically the set dressings were like really really great, but the story sometimes uh-huh. did drag, and in part two, it felt like some people were just carrying like the idiot ball. There was a mm-hmm. lot of just like oh, well, we're really lucky that the emperor landed. You know, out, you know, outside on the outskirts, you know, even though I I don't see why he couldn't have just like landed right over the capital city in some way. But uh, but all of that to say, like, it's a very effective movie. Like, I wouldn't take anything away from anyone that made this movie, but I couldn't recommend anyone go out of their way to watch these Mm -hmm. movies. And I definitely didn't go out of my way to watch them. I waited this long to finally get around to them. So. We know that they're making a part three. We now I now I understand what a prequel is supposed to look like because they're making that prequel HBO Max series. Yeah. So I am more informed now. So I probably won't be going out of my way to watch any of this stuff. But it, it seems like a good holiday weekend with an extra with an extra day off. And I need to burn, you know. Okay, maybe I'll I'll check out the next Dune installment. Mm-hmm. So I was I kind of had higher hopes just because you know these two movies had been simmering kind of for a while. But there were still positives to, to take out of it. The um, the technology was really, really cool. I kind of have similar feelings about the desert that I do with underwater movies. Like, I don't want to be underwater, and I don't want to be in the desert because no. it's just pretty well, boring. But at least the desert had, like, these giant sandworms, the, and that was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, well the, desert, the desert serves a purpose. It's not like it's an original movie kind of like. Not not anything like Avatar. Like, you know, Avatar has their... Like, you know, like it's like based on the... Like, you, Dune is the you, same planet. You have to do that. Yeah. You, you read the book, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. How does how does the spice make interstellar travel possible? It, I, I, I would have loved to see how that works. The spice is... <laughs> it's, well, it's just more like a drug. And, and in the books, like, I would say, even if you went back and watched the original one, the, the, the space guild is very... They're, they're left alone. But it's kind of like a drug that unlocks, like, a another dimension in their minds kind of thing. It turns them into like living computers. And you kind of saw some of the human computer people in this movie, at least mostly the first movie, right? Um, like there was the mint hats um, who like, it was, it was the, the older guy in the first movie and he could like tell them everything about it like very quickly. So like the whole universe is much bigger than that. Like they actually, why you don't see technology is because there was a technological war millennia ago. And they were like the, emperor outlawed all computers and technology because the ai was like or not AI, but like computers were turning against humans and trying to kill them so when they beat them that's why it's so it's there's a lot more to it why it looks and is very uh, grounded like this, and, and not like I thought, forward future if you will i thought the spice was like fuel like they were throwing yeah. it into like a furnace and that was making oh their no, ships, no, no like the, 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 travelers the people like use now they actually have the, the engines to do it um but it it helps them do the calculations to do the, uh, the the jump travel, so interesting. Okay, so that's what it is. But I really like doing. I think I think honestly, you know, that's my kind of sci fi level. Uh, that's why I would say you know I, I resonate with it a little bit more. It, it to me and and you may it's it's essentially space Game of Thrones rather than well uh, I fantasy I, Game of Thrones. I do like being exposed to kind of because like, this is a seminal work of science fiction that a lot of people have drawn on, and I would not be shocked if you told me the kind of space witches that David Filoni created in the Clone Wars were yeah. like a direct reference to the, what is it, the Bene Jesuit? Yeah, Bene Jesuit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the um, in Dune. Like, they, they they seem to be directly inspired yeah, uh, it, from the kind of that source material. It, yeah, there's I mean, there's a lot of, you know, again, this book was, I think, written in the 60s, so, like, absolutely, you know, a lot of uh, 
set a lot of people forward on sci-fi. I would even say probably George R. R. Martin was probably inspired by some of this, and like I said, in his Game of Thrones stuff, right? Because of mm-hmm. all the houses and the different things they do, and like you know the backstabbing and the, everything. So, um, yeah, it gets real. This, this series gets real weird. I would give him one more movie, one more book, maybe even Children of Dune. But like, boy, does it get real fucking weird after like that fourth <laughs> book. Uh, so. Yeah, so we'll we'll start here. But I'm glad you got watch it and you're you're, you're caught up with. Uh, well, I would say probably the biggest movie of this year so far, right? Dune Part Two in theaters. So um, we'll we'll see what else comes. But the other big movie, I think this will be the biggest movie of the year, Mike. Probably other than Craven the Hunter, wink wink, which we'll talk about later, uh, is Deadpool and Wolverine. And the tickets are now available. If you haven't got your tickets, I want to make sure we talked about it last week um, when Patrick was the guest. Thank you for host guest hosting, Patrick. Uh, that. Tickets are now available for Deadpool and Wolverine. I got mine like half an hour after they went on sale. My row was sold out that I normally go to. So it was just wild to me that they're going that fast. Um, and I, you know, they did say, you know, this is one of the fastest selling R rated films of all time, at least on like internet, um, you know, uh, ticket purchasing websites. Uh, and then if you get them in some places, uh, like through Fandango, you can actually get the best friends necklaces, right? The, the Deadpool and Wolverine necklace that was in that promo poster uh so they're, they're selling some of those so they're giving some of those away but um one of the things about this mike is in and i, I linked these here there's two cross promotions with it one is an in cinema ad to turn off your phones and uh this is by far one of the funniest things i've ever i've seen for for turn off your phones i hate the really cheesy ones where they're like you know uh was it like it's ringing and someone turns around and says what's going on but this one was actually entertaining because Deadpool's known for breaking the fourth wall. Wolverine is in here with Hugh Jackman, you know, telling them to um, shut off your excuse on uh, fucking phones, uh, but bleeping it out. And uh, they even what they say we we know who's someone who's going to be in Secret Wars. Like they're even poking like the the bear a little bit for for leaks and spoilers. Chris, you have you have no idea how excited I was to, to see this. Good. I ranted on the show like months ago about how what we need to do is we need to make uh, a put your phones away ad that's like not cheeky and like not cutesy or not just like clips from Amazon Prime TV shows, which is the one that I remember seeing the most recently. Uh, I like and it needs to run literally before the movie plays, like not before the big like AMC like, oh, Coca-Cola ad, like yeah. literally before the opening like crawl of the credits uh, they somebody needs to f- have fear struck in them yep. to put their phones away so uh the best case scenario is that's what this is done like they use this just before the movie yeah. starts the roll that would be amazing uh i love how violent it is like it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah i understand it is for comedic effect but huge like i believe that uh logan would be in there trying to murder you if your phone yeah. was there they even do like the the ringing of the phone as well yeah. so like you it's almost like they're they're doing like a mock scenario of just yeah. like, Hey, yeah, is, this is annoying folks. Right. When your phone rings and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, I would go even a step further, Chris, I, cause it's not just the ringing anymore. It's people don't put their phones on ring anymore. I, I can't remember the last time I heard a phone. It's just when the giant screen flashlight is coming yeah. out in the corner of your eye and you can't. So I like, I need somebody to get nitty gritty in it. I want just like 30 seconds of just like, you're a bad person. If you're on your device at all, no glowing, stop distracting people. So, uh, but this is, uh, off to a great yeah. start. Um, you know, if, uh, the popcorn buckets went viral, maybe we can kind of get this going viral and yeah. then every movie will be making their own. That'll be like a new yeah. law. Let's have Congress pass a new law that if you're going to have a movie in theaters, it needs to start with a custom created, uh, put your phone uh, I don't, away. I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I think you give to, you make people do it. You're going to get, you know, you're going to diminishing returns, right? People aren't going to make fun ones anymore, but I, I enjoy this, and this is one I could see them using for a few years, even right. Like I, I don't mind this running for several years, um, but the the luxury of Deadpool breaking the third wall, the the luxury of it being an R rated film, and they 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 bleep out the words but don't cover his mouth, so you can see what he's saying the whole time. And I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> great. Like he's just he's just very angry, and he's wearing that, and you know it it is fun. It it shouldn't be it, it things should be fun in the cinema. I'm glad this is fun. But it's like the perfect storm of everything with them. Uh, yeah, along the way. I'm clicking. I'm clicking around uh, my local theaters um, showtimes for the Thursday, the 25th, and yeah, yeah they're they're starting to sell. And this is a movie that's two months away. 
So mm-hmm. maybe maybe this, Chris, like you were saying, maybe this kind of changes the headlines in the entertainment section of the newspaper. Yeah. Um, if the newspaper is, <laughs> still exists in two months right. of like, hey, uh, the box office is back. Movies are back. And it yeah. kind of maybe will change the tone. Well, I, I think it'll Hollywood. be it'll be it won't be movies are back. I, I think we they did that with Dune already this year. We've already had that 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 title. And I think it's more of the, like the event film. You know, Marvel is is back. You know, Disney has turned themselves around with this one. Um, even even though that may not be true by the time we watch the next movie, but it's going to kind of lean into like event filmmaking is has returned right uh, to to get them back in there. So uh, I, I'm 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 excited for that. And then the other cross promotion that was really funny is that um, this is the first Marvel movie with a beer tie in, and it's for Heineken and. Um, the only thing that I ever remember of Heineken was like when they did Austin Powers back in like the late nineties, early two thousands. So it's uh, funnier to have Deadpool and Wolverine. Wolverine can't get his claws out to attack Deadpool because Deadpool uh, stole the adamantium to make him some silver bullet Heinekens. So uh, this is this is just funny. Like you know, if they're gonna cut promos, Ryan Reynolds, we always talk about being a marketing genius, right? Doing that stuff, they're gonna throw everything they can and he's gonna he's gonna make it fun right I, i'm not gonna go drink heineken this isn't convincing me to drink a heineken by any means mike but <laughs> i will remember the name heineken beer kind of going forward because of some of the funny stuff like this um is there anything you would want to see crossover with deadpool outside of beer or or movie promos that, that has not yet that was my question for you today well on, the first thing the that comes to my mind is the most obvious one is some sort of like chimichanga taco bell crossover but mm-hmm. i cannot i am feuding a one-sided feud with Taco Bell right now. They go out of their way to change their app icon to a big cheese it mm-hmm. because they're going to start putting the big cheese it in the crunch wrap. And I'm looking, and my so, local Taco Bell and the I'm other gonna, Taco Bell <laughs> ain't got it. I would like, tell you, you I know understand why? that. Do you know why? why? Because it, when you open the app, it says drops on Tuesday. Is what it was. Uh, it, it drops like, tomorrow. I understand. Like, I <laughs> understand the concept of yeah. pre-promoting something, but to go out of your way to make it so obvious, like literally, somebody opens up their phone. They're like, "Oh, I'm going to get some Taco Bell." They, the, oh my god, my whole app icon is now a cheese it. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And then to go, oh, now you have to wait until I mean, it's the Memorial Weekend. Like yeah, they, I feel like I could have putting down some Taco Bell this week. Yeah, they, you know? yeah, when you open up and it says, uh, you know, new drops on Tuesday and it's the cheese thing. But I'm excited for the cheese as well. I, I, I went yesterday, picked up lunch there because I wanted some nacho fries before they disappeared. So that's what, I, mean, I think Taco Bell would be a, a, a funny one. Um, I, I was trying to think what I would like to see them cross around. If, you know, you got, you got a good point there with the food. Um, yeah, I, everything I'm seeing right now is Twisted Teas. Mike, is, do we get a Twisted Tea crossover as well as Heineken over here? With, with these people, but um, I, I don't know. So I, I think this is fun, but you guys can check out all these trailers in the, in the show notes. We link them all, all the time uh, in, in the show notes. Moving on, but in the same vein, X-Men, Mike, uh, Deadline, I think it was Deadline, has said that uh, Marvel is uh, courting or in talks with uh, screenwriter Michael Leslie to write the mutant-led reboot, at least the first draft of it, right? We know... All these scripts go through multiple iterations. They're not just like first draft done and they film it, right? Uh, especially with so much time. So uh, Michael Leslie, he's known most recently for the, um, the Hunger Games prequel, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, uh, and some other uh, movies. But uh, that's great. They're getting to work on it, right? Like, you know, we, we don't have a director, but they need a, a script before they kind of hire a director, I guess. Um, yeah, it's crazy that we're now just casually talking about the next X Men movie mm-hmm. when when we started the podcast, it was owned by an entirely different company. Yeah, we were we we hadn't even got Apocalypse when we started the show yet. I think <laughs> X Men Apocalypse. I was so, I was like I kind of want to rewatch that the other day just to see um, how far Oscar Isaac has come as, as a comic <laughs> book actor uh, from from that. So might might dive back into that. But yeah, uh, X Men. I think this is again we've always we don't have a release date, but this is always going to be. To me, post Secret Wars, right? They're going to lean into Fantastic Four and X Men, um, maybe even some other Fox properties post post uh, Secret Secret Wars at the end of the day. But we'll keep you posted whenever this gets confirmed. Moving on, Vision. Uh, I told you this the other day when we talked. We actually talked on the phone earlier this week. Uh, very surprisingly announced that a Vision series, not Vision Quest, but Vision series, as right now, is officially announced with Terry Metalis. Uh, who most recently uh, was a showrunner slash maybe writer for the last two seasons of Star Trek Picard um, is is coming in 2026. And yeah, uh, th- this, this can't possibly be 
the uh, announcement of a second Vision series. This yes. has got to be like we are just there's going to be one Vision TV show that we're just yeah. kind of announcing it. <laughs> My guess is, and, and we'll talk a little bit about it here on the on the next thing is that Vision Quest. Uh, was one of those shows that was kind of announced back when Bob Chapek was in Disney, right? Like, hey, make more, make more, make more, make more. We need more. Uh, and Vision Quest kind of came out of that. So I think, you know, the idea of Bob Iger saying we're going back to things that work, the character Vision uh, has been in very, very popular projects across Marvel. So getting Paul Bettany back as Vision and revamping it from that Vision Quest series into something else, I think is a, is going to be a great idea and probably some pretty good show for, for Disney Plus, right? Yeah. I would love a uh, like a uh, infographic timeline that shows all of the Marvel projects out there in the world, uh, and then just a nice highlight of uh, Bob Chapek's reign, so mm-hmm. we can kind of know what was and wasn't affected by the presence of Chapek. Because obviously you had things that were like in post production, you know, when Bob Ch- Bob Chapek took over, so you know less likely to be affected. But then we have entire projects that were conceived and created uh during his reign that you can kind of they're fully place blame very on the, churned the crunch they were very yeah, exactly. churned. like i mean i would i would say um echo would be maybe the last project well i iron heart but that's got a whole nother year away you weren't here last week iron heart's in a year and a half from this coming fall so they may have a lot of time to revamp iron heart right um since it's even post daredevil yeah so i i would say we, maybe echo we, might be the last vestige of that well, we drove by um, McDonald's yesterday, and it was hilarious to see a, a vinyl hang in their window of um, Captain America 4, Brave yeah. New World, and it says, and it just says coming next year, which is, it's so weird, because it's like, oh, this is like a an ad for a movie at a McDonald's, but actually it was probably originally supposed to be for Happy Meal, like tie-in toys, because the movie was supposed to be out already. Mm-hmm. The Happy so Meal maybe, toys are out, by the way, if you want to get some. Yes, yeah, so, exactly. So maybe maybe Marvel was just like, hey, we already kind of paid for this slot on your window. We might as well just use it to well, advertise the movie coming soon. Having, having worked in, in the brick-and-mortar space like that, a lot of that stuff is pre-printed and held. And then there is an expiration date on some of those things, right? Like stickers, stuff like that. So, and McDonald's has already guaranteed slots. Like, hey, we have to have toys for this market. So I guarantee you, they, McDonald's was like, we're going to hold you to this because we need toys in our Happy Meals or else, you know, mm-hmm. we're not going to sell Happy Meals. So it is the the idea of, um, well, the actor strike and the revamp, vamping of it, um, everything just kind of really just shuffled everybody's schedules around, right? Some things are rigid and finite. And then some things are like, now nah, we can, we can wait the movie back a year. You want those, to- any toys you don't sell, hold on to them. We're coming back next year with the same ones again <laughs> along the way. But I, I'm excited for vision. I think, I think that fits the idea of like, Hey, we're going to focus on things that work. Uh, Paul Bettany is a great actor. I think having the visions, I love the look I, when I put up, maybe it was picking images for the, the stream today, I was like, oh, I love that white vision look that they had there mm-hmm. in WandaVision. So uh, I think they'll find a way to make that work. One of the other shows that we've not really heard anything from, maybe even, I don't know if this ever even officially announced, but I know they're working on it, is the Wonder Man series, right? And um, Brad Winderbaum, uh, who is the head of uh, Marvel's TV and uh, streaming, I think he was out there for X-Men 97 or, um, you know, kind of kind of mingling after that has come out uh has confirmed that wonder man is a marvel spotlight series like echo was so you don't i know echo is a spinoff of hawkeye due to the chapek era but wonder man is going to be like kind of one of those standalone things where you're like if you want to watch it you can if not you don't have to kind of deals uh but it is um you know the first two episodes are directed by daniel destin cretton who did shang chi and is doing shang chi 2 uh will um have the debut of Yaya Mateen Abdul the second as Wonder Man. Uh and um yeah, I mean I'm I'm excited for it, but we don't know we know nothing about it. Literally nothing about it yet. And this yeah, quote I think Yeah, go ahead. Uh I think by next week's show, possibly, I've been re watching uh Shang Chi while I uh, work out. So I'm watching it about 30 minutes at a time. And I put it on last week and I realized I hadn't watched it since I had seen it in theaters. Like that was one of the first movies to kind of come back uh, out of the pandemic. Uh, so I feel like I just either not had written it off, but I just kind of forgot about it. But uh, I, if I'm to re-review the first 30 minutes of the movie, 
great. Like, I forgot, like, this movie is, like, really fun, at least in the first 30 minutes. That bus fight scene Mm -hmm. is really, really cool. Simu Liu is, I'm sure he has a stunt double on set as well, but he is very clearly doing a lot of his own combat and martial arts in that scene. And it's just great. Uh, The the dynamic between uh, Aquafina and Simu is just yeah. Awesome. So I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out the next 30 minutes. And if my workout schedule goes as planned, uh, maybe I'll, I'll tune back in next week and give everybody yeah. an update on like the next 60 the, minutes uh, the, for the movie. <laughs> yeah. That, that comes up one pretty, pretty frequently here whenever I, I just throw on my, my Marvel streaming channel, but I really, I, it's interesting because that movie really doesn't have superpowers until like later on in the movie, right. With the, the, the actual 10 rings. So to see, a character be that you know charismatic and only just be like a very highly skilled martial artist is really fun uh, mm-hmm. for for Marvel. So I absolutely agree. One of the things Wonder Bomb also said, uh, you know, when he was talking about Wonder Man and everything else, he's like, you know, two years ago um, the directive was to fill the service quote unquote Disney Plus as fast as possible, no matter what, and it's now a oh more considered <laughs> approach where they develop more than they produce. So I, you, you, when you said I want to, I want a list of items like. This is the Chapek things that were touched, right? That were just like fill it as fast as possible versus, you know, post Chapek. I would like to see a list of things that we've been rumored to, to be developed and what's actually come off of it, right? Like, a, like, a, like, a, oh, these are, these are being greenlit. These were just rumors kind of thing. Um, because I think we're going to get a lot of that. Cause we, we talk every week. It's like, you know, this, they're being developing this or developing this. Well, developing doesn't mean it's going to come to, see the light of day it's just something that they have to do to say will this work will this fit our needs at the time right so um yeah it it is crazy just how absolutely damaging that policy was mm -hmm. right because it's funny like i'm trying to imagine like the other version of the strategy which was just to like stay the course you know make fewer great stuff how would that really have affected the Disney Plus streaming numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not necessarily subscribing just because there's like a new thing that just dropped. Like you're staying subscribed because like Disney has that super strong catalog, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not going to churn because, you know, later this year there's going to be like another season of like the Mandalorian, something that's already established. Like I'm sure they would have had a few more churners than usual, but it's just hard for me to comprehend. Like, would it really have been that bad if yeah. they didn't go full bore ahead and try to stuff but, the streaming service? Because Disney was one of those few brands that kind of already had like the vault. You yeah. know, they almost they could have released Disney Plus with zero announcements of any new stuff, and they probably still would have been better off than like Paramount Plus is right, right. now, even it, with like all of this new Star Trek stuff. You it, know, this comes across. You know, you, you you may find this out in a couple months, Mike, but a lot of parents are like we keep Disney plus because our kids are watching it. Like they have so mm-hmm. much kid oriented material and it's easy to find that kid stuff in there. Like you'll, you'll put them on, they'll put them on there and watch that. Like, you know, the advent of bluey. I, I, I understand what bluey is. I've never watched it before, but I know it's very popular. And even with, among the parents of children, it's on there, right? Disney, Disney is grabbing that. They've also been grabbing doctor who they're trying to get, you know, stuff in, you know, uh, quote, quote, across the pond, if you will, trying to, to bring people in. So I think they, there's the idea of even, licensing they just missed out on licensing good stuff that already existed right and putting it on their service whenever they were just like just make everything we'll own it all and um it, it you know we're still feeling it years later after after chapek was even ousted right um what well, they're still they're still trying to bring back good will across, across yeah the page. J- just the fact that the moniker marvel spotlight has to exist mm-hmm. and it gets described as like well you don't have to watch it if you don't want to like how insane is that that a streaming service has to look at content as just like oh this is optional it's like no why are you making anything that's that's well, optional th- that's, that's insane <laughs> i i disagree with you entirely because there's the idea of background content right like background they're like they're making shows to fill the background because people just need noise and you don't want to watch it and and i think yeah. that's fine there that is perfectly fine to make mediocre content that's background noise that you don't need to focus in on sometimes uh, I would say leave the me- mediocre content to maybe not the Marvel label. Well, I, 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 I know. Powering I, no, the I agree. Studio with I agree. Of dollars. I'm not saying it's Marvel. <laughs> I'm not saying it's Marvel. I'm just saying in general, that content is still okay. I, I, again, 
they should have thought about that before again they slapped it and said hey marvel you have to make more stuff um along the way and and literally it's you know between that again we, we talked about last year's writer's strike and direct um what was it actor strike everything has just been a uh a boulder rolling down a hill and we don't know when it's going to really settle yet. So we'll, we'll see, but um, I'm still excited for wonder man. I think it's got a, a strong cast. It's got strong people behind it. And they, since they have not announced a date for it, there's a lot of time for them to adjust things and, and do the TV approach that they said that they're going to be doing. So we'll see where that is when that comes out. Mike, last week, were you here last week when we talked about the Blonde Phantom, or was that two weeks ago where we talked about it? Um, I was not here last week okay. when you talked about it, but I am prepped on the topic. Yes. It is about an old Marvel character, but wasn't originally a Marvel character, correct? Well, it was... It, it, yeah, that doesn't matter. That, I think I think that's a, that doesn't matter. At her, it's essentially a, a secretary who moonlit as like a, a a spy kind of like comic book person like the 50s right as uh, she came back as in she hulk in like the late 80s early 90s but um it was this rumored to be scarlett johansson's project because she mentioned in an interview several years ago and that's what she's producing because that's something you know that she wants to do the newest rumor is that uh singer slash popular artist taylor swift has met with kevin feige about the mcu most people think i love how you felt i love how you felt compelled to uh um, explain to yeah. classify who taylor swift well was. i don't know who our audiences are and i'm and, and that's fine but I will tell you that the, she's. I think it is confirmed that she met with Kevin Feige about the MCU. Now, I don't think she's going to be Dazzler and, and Deadpool. A lot of people say, I don't think she's going to do that. The rumor now is that she met with him about maybe taking the lead in this Blonde Phantom project, which is set to be a 1950s spy movie set in Las Vegas. Two things kind of check the boxes here. One, it would align with a non-necessary character era. Um, like, hey... We want to do something set in the MCU in the 50s. We don't need it to be someone who's going to carry a six-movie franchise. It could be a one-off thing. Boom, check that. And then plus, uh, Taylor Swift would be a huge audience draw because everything she touches uh, turns to gold. So uh, is that... I don't know where the Blonde Phantom Project lives overall uh, or why Scarlett Johansson has uh, possibly has such an effect on it, but... If they were to do a 1950s set thing, I think you know, get Taylor Swift. You're gonna you're gonna have instant money at the box office. Yeah, here. you put it in theaters for sure. Don't put it on Disney Plus because I feel like you're leaving box office dollars yeah. on the doorstep well, for sure. You also we all saw... last week. There's no more Disney. Disney Plus gets two shows a year, no movies. That's it. So nothing's going yeah, to Disney so... Plus anymore. Yeah, I doubt that they're going to be uh, filling one of those slots with something that could be earning box office revenue. Uh, But you do bring up a great point. Like, this feels like a great idea of, like, testing the waters with Taylor Swift in a a lead role. Uh, I don't know her entire acting uh, career, but there is a movie that my wife and I occasionally watch called Valentine's Day where she just kind of played, like, a a ditzy cheerleader um, in high school in, like, just, like, a brief... um, kind of like one or two off part you know she's funny in that so uh she can definitely command a crowd that's for sure we all saw her live performance on disney plus so this kind of feels like a good way to test her out of just like hey if the project doesn't go off well we don't really need to continue Mm -hmm. this like kind of pocket of marvel so it it could be a good strategy you know taylor swift scarlett johansson two entertainment powerhouses going at it and literally, again, it could be a Marvel character. It could be in the MCU in the 50s, but you don't have to touch anything else, right? Like, we don't have to worry about a Kang showing up here or anything. Like, we just set this one movie here, and uh, it's going to make money no matter what what happens with it. So uh, I, I think I think it's great. I, if it's true, awesome. If not, I'm still not offended either way at the end of the day. So we'll see if this ever comes to fruition. Moving into rumor territory, we got some rumors uh, here for a little bit. Number one is that Franklin Richards will be part of the Fantastic Four team, and his suit will have the number five on it because he would be technically the first fifth member, if you will. And the more I thought about this, I'm like, well, the actors they have for Reed and Sue, Pedro Pascal, and oh, Vanessa Kirby are both easily age the age to be parents of like little kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this would make sense for them to be have a kid. We don't need Again, teenage Fantastic Four or the twenty age, the twenty-ish Fantastic Four. These actors are older. We know they're in their forties. They could easily have a kid who's like ten, 
and be part of this. Yeah, what's his what's his power set again? I can't Ooh, recall. He um about everything. He can make pocket universes. Like he can he's like multiversal pockets. He uh very very powerful uh tele telekinetic I guess or multiversal powers. He's got a lot of he got a lot of stuff going on. Uh in the oh, comic yeah. books he was like the 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 son of Phantom Four, but also a mutant gene as well in the comic books. So they could lean into this mutation or not. I, I don't know. It'll probably be just maybe discovering his powers as a little bit as a, as a kid doing this. Uh, according to his, I don't know how official the 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 power grid is on uh, uh, Marvel dot fandom dot com, oh, but his highest bar is on energy projection mm. at a seven. The second highest is intelligence at four. So it seems like he has like above average intelligence, and all of his uh, all it, of his power set is it, set in energy projection. Yeah, in, in one again, in one future, uh, it, he comes. The older version of him comes back because he lives to the end of time in that universe, and he literally makes Galactus his herald in that universe. Like that's how powerful he is. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, he he's got some stuff like that, but like it all depends on who's writing them and what they want to do with them, right? So his powers can be anything, you know, kind of kind of at any time. Uh, with that, uh, move uh, moving on in Fantastic Four. Natasha Leone, uh, actress of most recently, was it Russian Doll? I believe she was right. No, yeah, she was in Russian, Russian Doll. Russian Doll, and then what was the other one? The um, uh, uh, Orange is the New Black. Is that what you're thinking? I was thinking of the one where she was the murder mystery show. That um, oh, Knives Out. Ni- no, it was, it was it was not Knives. Out. It was the guy who wrote Knives Out. Who wrote Knives Out? The show he did. Oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, what was the show he did? Uh, show? Oh yeah, Poker Face. Poker Face. There, it yes, Poker. I was like, there we go. There she, we go. We uh, got she, there. We got there. Face, yes. Uh, so she's been in some great, uh, obviously, some great content lately. Um, she has uh, been cast in a unknown but surprising role in in this movie, according to the. She's been cast officially, but the scooper says a surprising role. Some rumors are saying that she could be a, a female Doctor Doom in this universe. Um, be multiversal, right? Not the Doctor Doom across all time, but like that that version of this. Um, so to see Natasha Leon versus like a, a female Doctor Doom versus uh, Vanessa Kirby's Invisible would be an interesting twist on the the standard formula from before. Um, I don't think she could be. Do- I don't think she's Doctor Doom. If I'm going to be completely honest, but uh, I think it's still a great great grab, right? I think she's a great actress for this. Yeah, she's great. I have no idea what she'll what she'll be. I there's a part of me that thinks that maybe they're going to try to go more traditional to the comic books with Doctor Doom, mm-hmm. just because they've yet to kind of really achieve the classic Doctor we, Doom. We don't in need cinematic Doctor form, Doom, you know, this early. <laughs> I, I think if you have Galactus, you don't need Doctor Doom at the same time, right? Like, is that that's too many famous villains in yeah. one film? So yeah, I feel like we haven't had a lot of long con kind of conniving villains in the Marvel MCU just yet. Like every villain that we've come across seems to be a reaction to something that the hero has done, which is why we've gotten a lot of those palette swap villains. I do really like the idea of Victor Von Doom. You know, he was (laughs) sitting on his throne and he got the report that uh, Tony Stark, this this arms dealer had become Iron Man and then he's just watching all of this stuff play out and you know he's preparing and he's planning and then all of a sudden he executes this masterful plan kind of not unlike um uh, uh God, I can't think of his name Baron the uh, what's his in uh Civil War oh um, uh, what's yeah, the yeah. villain's name again uh, no, uh, <laughs> not Baron Mordo that's the doctor that's Doctor Strange no. villain oh god why can't I think of his name yeah. he's got you know he's got the purple yep. beanie he in does, the comic he, book he, da- he dances in, in, the, <laughs> yeah. in the show for for the life of me I can't remember yeah. his name but kind of like that but to the tenth degree you know. Yeah. Not just pl- plotting the, revenge for his family, but plotting for the entire supremacy of the planet. You know? Yeah, and I think the one thing I would say is that you know he he needs his own country, and we got to get Latveria in there some way. Like he needs to be a ruler of his own country, right? Like you know, being just an outsider like somebody else. You know, well, we went to school together, and he's, he's not leading his own country. That's a little. We got to have that part of it. And I, I think you, I agree with you. We got to have a more fulfilled Doctor Doom at the end of the day. So absolutely on board with that. Um, moving on, Avengers five possibly. You know, Kang Dynasty doubted though they've been calling it Avengers five. But the rumor, there's a rumor that a new Kang slash 
the Conqueror, and I put the slash for a reason, will be announced in the next few months. So they could use the name The Conqueror to get around the potential issues of the recasting if any exists. Um, <laughs> I, I do like that idea yeah. that uh, we can do it. We just can't use the word Kang anymore. Mm-hmm. We've run, we've been running it through our lawyers. We've been stress testing the case, you know, for months now. Yeah. We finally came to the idea of you just drop those four letters, Kang. Well, either way, um, I think if they, they're going to contain that. We've talked about the five main Actors, characters in this movie so far uh, being very different, right? Spider-Man, New Captain America, Hulk, She-Hulk, and Moon Knight. Uh, if they're going to have a multiversal person, we'll just, just finish it up with Kang. Don't don't introduce anybody to an Avengers movie uh, like that. You know, can continue with Kang if you need to to get that done. But um, the other part of this is the Fantastic Four is not likely to appear in Avengers Five. They will probably carry over into Secret Wars, which I don't think anyone was really concerned about. Yeah, we you know we heard the rumor that Avengers five is supposed to be slightly smaller scale or at least mm-hmm. a trim backed team, so, so that would make sense. And it was set up for a Secret Wars, right? Which would be multiversal. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Uh, rumor time for Spider Man four. I like a good Spider Man movie, Mike. I don't know about you, um, but a Spider Man four, the Toby, not Toby McGuire, not the Toby McGuire one. I was gonna say the uh, not the Andrew Garfield one, but the Tom Holland one. Uh, the Bad Boys 4 slash Batgirl movie that was deleted, director team, Adil, El Arby, and Bilal Fala as uh, our front runners as directors currently on like that short list. Um, no, well, I love that, that they were kind of poached from Warner Brothers, and I'm sure it wasn't hard to poach them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, the, I, I doubt they had any sort of allegiances over if, there. If you go back, um, even the, I think the director, uh, El Arby, he shared like a, a note Kevin Feige even sent them saying like, you know, he was sorry to hear about their experience in the movie and stuff like that and, and some other stuff. So, like, he has been in touch with them beforehand. So, uh, snagged them right up out of that one for that. But here's where the rumor is that's going to be interesting for you, is that the Kingpin will be the main villain with returning henchmen the Shocker from Homecoming and the Scorpion, also from Homecoming, uh, to return with the latter the Scorpion bonding with MCU symbiote like he did in the comic books. Uh, so they could have oh. a venom-powered scorpion, uh, rather than a quote-unquote venom. They would have a symbiote-powered scorpion in in the movie. As well. well, that would be pretty sick, actually. I don't think I have a a visual um, reference for that. Uh, I wouldn't be, doubt if it's happened in the comic books before. Yeah, I, I feel like Venom has kind of circled through every character da- in the in the, yeah. in the Marvel comic book universe. You know, in uh, Dark Avengers, actually, which you know a lot of lines are kind of pointing to uh, the the Venom on the team or Spider-Man on the team was actually Matt Gargan in the symbiote suit. And he was much more like a carnage, if you will, like how much, how brutal he was and was killing stuff like that. Um, the other rumor with this is that Peter Parker may be killed slash die in the movie and then bond with the symbiote at his point of death to bring him back to life. And that's where we get a Spider-Man with black suit. It's from the symbiote. Mm. Bring him back well, like I said the other week, I'm sitting on that Secret Wars number eight yeah. where the black suit is attached to. I would prefer the black suit <laughs> to happen in Secret Wars to possibly maximize my return on investment for that comic book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it sounds cool. I'm thinking like, oh, maybe the Kingpin uh, has Alistair Smythe working for him. Smythe is like, hey, we discovered this symbiote and these things that it can do. And Kingpin's like, well, Spider-Man's messing up my stuff, so I'm going to throw this super-powered goo on my henchmen and send them after him. I could see yeah. that happening. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, even if maybe maybe this um, this small scene, he gets a black suit, but, like, you know, they in the movie with that, he goes back to, he's like, I don't, you know, the symbiote turns him back into his regular red and blue suit, I guess. And then he uses that next in Secret Wars would be still pretty interesting. But um, it sounds like they got some ideas to do us. These don't sound like bad ideas, so we'll see how they execute them with the with the writing team and director. Now we're going to get into some interesting things here because we have some, a plot leak for Venom, The Last Dance, coming out later this year, Venom 3. Uh, essentially, I, to boil it down, Mike, I, I've linked the... Uh, the thread on X now it's X it's no longer Twitter. It's, it's officially X, <laughs> uh, but it will focus on Eddie uh, Brock keeping his universe's 10 year old Peter Parker alive from his venom suit because venom wants to kill all Peter Parker's after being in the MCU while dealing with the spawns of the carnage symbiotes. Uh, there's like four or five of them. And then also the human group called the jury who want to kill all symbiotes in existence. Just just to just to break it down real quick here, <laughs> um, 
boy, does this sound vi- busy as fudge for a movie. Yeah, I just, I, I just, I just read through this. Uh, so there's some sort of hive mind uh, that Eddie and Venom are tapping into. Uh, which, which says that, to be they multiversal. Kinda, they kind of had that at the end of two and the beginning of uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home or No Way Home. So yeah, yeah, uh, keep with that. And the hive mind is telling him that uh, he will be killed by uh, Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, uh, which kind of is really funny because that's what happens in Madam Web. The yeah. villain has these visions of being killed by a spider person, so he decides to preemptively hunt them down and kill them. Uh, and the twist it looks like here is that Peter is just going to be 10 years old. So that's where you get your kind of like conflict of like, well, Eddie and Venom are kind of chaotic neutrals to good so could they even go through with killing a 10 year old boy it mm-hmm. sounds like there's some funny stuff that could happen in there and you know this is your roundabout way you know to get spider you know yeah. quote unquote spider-man that, in that, your movie without putting spider-man in your that's movie that's what madam webb did mike do you remember madam webb yeah. had, had you know <laughs> ben parker his sister Wait, was having uh, a kid excuse me chris when you bring up madam webb i really need you to append uh netflix uh, number two streaming yeah. uh, smash film right Madam behind Web, Atlas, the is. movie about <laughs> Jennifer Lopez hating AI, right? And that is just has exactly. like a ten percent, I think, on on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but this this is, sounds balls to the wall crazy. Which if they can actually increase the number of symbiotes and then also use uh, you know the jury humans are killing symbiotes and all this stuff, it sounds like it could be just straight you know action go 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 and that's fine with me right i i don't want downtime in these uh these movies so um if this is true this is just gonna blow my mind that they got a 10 year old peter parker in this movie i think that's that's what's blowing my mind here at the end of the day yeah it's just another um it's just another reminder that peter parker is a relatively useless character to the audience until they get bit by that spider um it sounds like there's a funny bit in here where they try to get him bitten by yeah. other spiders that just make him allergic. Like all that, this stuff sounds funny, but like I don't care about this movie I, franchise I, anymore. I, I do because this is the last one. They they said that this is the last Venom movie, and I want to see how do they end this goddamn franchise, right? Like you know, watching <laughs> the first one. The first one has like you know a couple YouTube moments that are pretty cool, but overall it's black goo fighting gray goo, right? Um, you know, the second one had Woody Harrelson going, you know, being crazy as carnage. They kind of lacked some of the, the cohesiveness of it, but it was, you know, a very quick paced movie, but this one, it, carnage symbiotes are great. I love playing. Um, what is that? The super Nintendo game. Um, it's total co- maximum carnage, maximum carnage, right? maximum where, carnage where all yeah. the symbiotes are out. I love seeing their, their different powers, even the Spider-Man PS five game, right? Spider-Man two had the different symbiotes. So I will, I would like to see this, but, um, it, it needs to it needs to just go and and just be going and not not slowing down. But the Madam problem, Web, yeah, still number two. Sorry, I had to look it up. Oh lord, still number two. Twenty million hours viewed. Um, ten million views. So if if uh, well, yeah, I guess it's roughly like a two hour movie. So I guess, yeah. I guess that makes sense. It's the same but, five people wow. watching it. Like this, the Snyder fans <laughs> have moved over to. Oh, to Madam Web. But that's fine. You know, when it's free and the curiosity, like, again, I saw someone mention the ick factor of, of Madam Web, right? Like, it's just so fucking bad. Like, no, you can, and no one believes it's that bad until you watch it. You're like, oh, it is that bad. Mm-hmm. So I, I absolutely believe it's one of those situations where someone's like, it can't be that bad. And they watch it like, oh, yeah, it is that bad uh, kind of thing. But, oh, well. But speaking of things that could be that bad, Craven the Hunter, Mike, one of the executives from Sony this week said that the movie – was moved uh, from this uh, original release date this summer to December because more people will have time to revisit the movie in theaters over and over again during the holidays. <laughs> uh, How delusional man. do you have to be? <laughs> like, you know, people aren't even watching good movies multiple times, let alone this one. Uh, oh my! This is—is is this what? This is just what they had to say to their bosses, right? When they, they moved the movie, they, they like pro- they had to find a way to justify it in the meeting on they, the memo. They have to put it out. Yeah, they—they they have to say something to. They—they they don't. They're not going to talk down about their own movie, right? That's not what just an executive is hired to do. They're here to tell yeah. you it's the best movie they've ever seen in their entire life. But, woof. and I know we always talk about how we wish we could hire an entertainment lawyer to give us kind of some insight on these deals that you know we'll never know about. 
because unless there's some sort of leaker or there's some sort of court case with discovery, we never know exactly how this yeah. stuff goes down. But it seems like whenever we're talking about, you know, Sony specifically, it seems all the mo- all the moves are always based on like some sort of delusion expiration date right? <laughs> delusion yeah. yeah so it's like oh we definitely have to make sure the movie comes out this calendar year though because mm-hmm. i'm jumping ship and i gotta make sure you know nah. i get all i get all of my proper um yeah, you know, residuals yeah. and if it spills over into the next year i have to, yeah. i can't go on my vacation to fiji or something the, uh... it seems like there's there's no long-term thinking with these strategies it's just like what's the next thing yeah, get it out we gotta put madam web out on, on valentine's day because all the couples are going to the movies to watch yes exactly uh, adam webb so we'll, we'll see the, about someone this. in the social department says they're going to make memes about it yeah we'll get a lot of people going because of the memes yeah the morbius had memes that's what people saw <laughs> and when we really released morbius guess what we lost money that's what um but yes yeah, so anyway craven the hunter when you uh, thank god it'll be out in december we can watch it more and more times in theaters lanterns james gunn uh has officially announced the team of chris mundy i think he was on criminal minds Tom King, comic book writer, and Damon Lindelof as the the people working on the Lanterns TV show. So uh, Lindelof uh, always puts up a red flag in my book, right? Uh, and, and we see a <laughs> Lost and some other stuff he did. A lot of mystery boxes with him. So hopefully they can you know kind of keep that contained. But Chris Mundy with Criminal Minds and Tom King, comic book writer, I think they could probably all maybe even each other out uh, to get some 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 quality content across the board there. I am I am most excited about this because I love Green Lanterns and I would love a good quality Green Lantern. Nothing against Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi's Green Lantern that they both starred in in from 2010, but boy, it's that still kicking the dick when you think about it. <laughs> Moving on, the last of a season two is currently filming and they have officially retapped Jeffrey Wright, uh, Commissioner Gordon, Batman, The Watcher, and uh, What If to play Isaac Dixon, a character he actually voiced in Part Two of the video game. Oh, I didn't even realize. I had to look the character up because it's it's been a while since I played The Last of Us uh, mm-hmm. Part Two. Uh, the the character, yeah, comparable looking. I mean, not exactly, uh, yeah. but I forgot who his character was, and I guess he's kind of a, a a leader of the. I guess depending on how you interpret good and evil, mm-hmm. uh, leader of the one the of the adversarial of group. Yeah. I guess is the way to put it. Yeah. Uh, that's cool though. Yeah, I, I'm like, well, that's that's a you know a, a great opportunity to bring that person in who who did the voice acting and, and and put him as actor. I like Jeffrey Light. Everything he does is I enjoy. Uh, I have not watched what was that movie that came out? It was it was an Oscar award winning movie. Um, oh, what was it? It's about the, oh, the book. Right. It was about the book writing one. Um, yeah, I, I would forgot, love to watch but, it, but he does great yeah. stuff. <laughs> I, I think I think he's a great. He's a great grab. He's even great in Westworld. You know, say what you will about Westworld, he is a great grab for that show as well. All right, we are at the end of the show. The end of the show means we're going to do a full review of X-Men 97, the full series, uh, probably mostly the last three episodes because it's been about a week and a half since I've watched any of the show. Uh, Mike, you, you were able to wrap it up earlier this week, um, mm-hmm. so uh, we're, we're going to talk about it. So full spoilers, if you've not seen it, all 10 episodes are on Disney+. Plus. You can go check them out, come back and listen to this. Uh, if you, um, you want to be quote-unquote spoiled, jump in. It's a cartoon show. I don't know how much spoilers are, but it was a... To me, overall, this season was a great time, and I had a good time, and I highly recommend it. That's my review for the full season. Mike, would you say the same thing before we spoil it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the yeah. fact that uh, my wife and I were a united front uh, mm-hmm. going crazy that we couldn't watch the finale the day it came out. We had to wait until our family left to check it out. I mean, that's that's saying something right yeah. there. It's, it's great. They do a great job of capturing the nostalgia, but also – upgrading it and mm-hmm. updating it so you you don't feel like you're watching something dated because i've heard i never got around to re-watching the original um before the new updated series came out but i did chat with a couple uh people that did do that they did the marathon they checked it all out and they're like oh yeah that those those older cartoons don't age as well as you thought they did at least yeah. i think not necessarily storytelling the wise but maybe yeah. just animation and yep. Um, some of that. Well, we always talk about but... the meme with Wolverine laying in bed looking at a photo, right? But he's in his yeah. full fucking Wolverine costume laying in <laughs> bed. Like, you know, they, they were they were just drawing stuff back then to kind of meet the weekly deadlines of, of Fox animation. But absolutely, the, the, the team, um, especially with the recently... De- not departed the world, but departed the show. Bo DeMeo, 
Um, you know, even he has been actively, you know, inter- engaging with fans, filling in the stories as the shows come out. Um, you know, they there's a lot of heart and like f- like feeling and nostalgia went into making this series, and you can tell yeah, there, there's it, that reverence of that material. Yeah, and sadly, I mean, I don't want to say they got lucky because it makes it sound like it's a positive coincidence, but the stories that the X Men usually tell are sadly timeless in a way because there's always some sort of persecuted group out there in the world uh Mm -hmm. that's you know getting genocided that's literally a plot line in this story and there's real world mirrors of that happening right now in the world so you're just watching it it's just like wow this is just everything is on topic and it's just you you're not expecting that and kind of like a vintage 90s cartoon you know to be kind of uh, touching on stuff that you would be able to see if you turned on the news right yeah. now in our own world. I, and I, and think, I, I think in that regard as well, one of the things about the show I enjoyed is none of the characters were per- technically safe either. Like, you know, characters die in this people and, and characters and mutants die in this who I thought would never die. Right. In the, in like the, not saying they can't be right back as comic books and animated stuff, even morph died quote unquote in the first episode of the first season of the original show. But like, I, I was I was proud of them for not saying everyone has to be alive by the end of the show, if you will. Mm-hmm. So and, and that adds to the weight of what you're talking about, like the weight of like there are actual things in here, like genocide and and you know, um, essentially you know racism against mutants and the the people who are affected by it, they don't make it out safely by the end of the show, and um, that that is that is how re- the real world real world works as well. Yeah. And it, it seems like really the the um, this final chapter of season one uh, really revolves around our discovery of the main villain that's been kind of planning in the background, which is Bastion. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this was a character I wasn't super familiar with. Uh, I had, didn't really have any sort of nostalgia for. So it was kind of interesting. For the most part, I was being introduced to something brand new that I hadn't seen before in yeah. these X-Men cartoons. And I, I do, I do, I, it wasn't as smooth of an introduction as I would have hoped, but I think it's just because everything else was just operating at such a high level for me because I, this is like, oh, these are all of my friends. These are all of the baddies I remember from Saturday morning cartoons. Like it was just so easy to drop back in. And then, oh, now I'm kind of getting something delivered to me that's brand new. And even his visual design probably was a little difficult from their point of view because it's like oh we're we're kind of adding our own new flavor to bastion but also Mm -hmm. he still needs to be seated properly within this 97 universe so i i feel like sometimes that that those two concept rubbed up against each other but overall it was still really fascinating especially in that last episode when he kind of i guess for lack of a better term starts to decompose like part of his face is coming off and you can see the organic circuitry robot yeah you get to see yeah Um, and also they just do a great job of like this is kind of like villain 101 where you make us empathize with them in some way and and it's kind of nice just seeing heroes be heroes at the very very end where they kind of had every reason to just obliterate this dude yeah. when he was underneath the sentinel foot like there's there no one would have blinked an eye if they just vaporized him from existence but right. they're like no we're gonna attempt to try to save them because we're good people i kind of had that similar feeling when I was watching those first 30 minutes of Shang-Chi yeah. where I feel like in a lot of superhero movies before they were to do this big bus fighting scene, they would have fabricated a way for the bus to briefly stop. And then all of the people get off the bus, you know, oh, yeah. and then we'll go back on our fighting adventure. Mm-hmm. But no, through that whole bus fight, uh, you know, Shang-Chi is doing his best to keep people out of the way, save them, stop them from falling out of the door. So it's just a nice reminder that like, Oh, when we're watching these superhero movies, there's supposed to be a hero. Right. Element yeah, yeah. involved, so it is kind of nice that Cyclops does kind of revert back to his kind of Boy Scout, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is weird, weirdly endearing. <laughs> yeah, and, and, it, and it worked because I think he kind of had that arc for the season, right? Like honestly, mm-hmm. the idea of him, like you know, is he is he married to Jean Grey or Madeline Pryor? His son was sent to the future. He finds out his son is Cable. Um, you know, he you know, Professor X, you know, is it literally just came back to life according to them, like. 
uh, Magneto's trying to destroy the world. Like, there's a lot going on in those last few episodes, which is great because that's, you know, that's what they've set up all these seeds. None of it was surprising, but it was still great to see it all kind of culminate, right? Like, it felt mm-hmm. like a lot of those strings, those loose strings were, not not all of them were tied up, but, like, it felt like, oh, we know what the ending is and we know where the next season's kind of going to go. Um, I will say one of the things I see online, a lot of people, you know, it's mixed, but I, I agree with the people who say Wolverine was sidelined. Yes, because he's not an, the X-Men. Wolverine is a character of the X-Men. The X-Men are technically dozens of other characters, right? And um, Also, just a crazy visual moment. I mean, that is like the epitome of yeah. like a comic book uh, um, splash page, right? Yeah. Just the adamantium being ripped off of his bones. Oh, yeah. Like, so brutal. It, and it just goes to... It also is a great storytelling mechanic to show you how serious Magneto is in that moment that he would resort to doing something that brutal. That's how high stakes it was. And then also, of course, the, the gears in my brain start the run of like, well, of course, Wolverine's not dead. Like they wouldn't even, they would never think to do that to a character of that magnitude in this show. Um, but then also, as we see in, in our little post credit scene, that even when a character's dead, there's probably a way they're going to bring him back well, to life. It is a comic book after yeah, all. Well, but like, I'm imagining, I'm already imagining kind of Wolverine's like arc in season two, where he's going to have the bone claws, you know, and he's going to, he's not going to have that adamantium I, to make him as lethal. And then I could yeah. see him maybe going, finding a way to get the adamantium back on him or something. I don't know. There's no, some, some sort of journey yeah. that he's going to go through. You I, know? I have an idea of what that journey is already because mm-hmm. at the end, uh, when you bring up the post-credits scene, that's where it's going to go because we see technically apocal- or apocalypse in the past when he's in Saban mm-hmm. with one group of people. We see the future where Cyclops meets his uh, young son, Cable, right, where he is in the future. Then we see Apocalypse at the side of Genosha picking up the, the card where Gambit was technically the horseman of death for Apocalypse in the comic books. Well, yeah, and I and I can't believe I never like I knew that that's that is a very kind of basic uh, part of Apocalypse's like origin. He yeah. has those horsemen and I was just like, oh, yeah, I never thought that like that would just be a very but easy way to bring somebody back. You know, we are we are missing three X-Men who were, who don't show up again at the end, Mike. Uh, if you if you add Gambit, add Wolverine, Storm, and Morph, uh, where where are Wolverine, Storm, and Morph at at the end of this? Right, we don't see them. They're not in the past. They're not in the future. They're missing on Forge's board. So what if the four Horsemen for Apocalypse are literally the four people we we you know, Gambit, Wolverine, Storm, and Morph become the, the new Horsemen for Apocalypse in the the present? Oh, day? that'd be that would be pretty wild because Wolverine uh, did also look up i did also look up apocalypse's uh power rankings when yeah. i was on that page a few minutes ago man he is like he's all like six and sevens in almost oh, every yeah. category he's not somebody you want to mess with yeah so uh it sets up some great I, I, that's that is a sign of a good show right here we're not talking we're talking about the show but we're talking about how excited we are for the next season right like mm. uh bo DeMeo says he he's already written some of uh season two I, that means they're probably going to fast track this because of the popularity of the show, Mike, right? Like get the voice actors back, do all this stuff. I had such a good time watching the show. My wife was on board as well. I couldn't watch. I, we were, we were behind, I think a week or maybe two because of stuff she had um, going on here ending, ending the school year. And we were like, I was like, can I watch it? She's like, no, not till I get to watch it with <laughs> you. So absolutely love that. Um, it, it, it was just fun to kind of see all the stuff. And I will say the one thing that disappoints me the most that I've seen the most talk about this show, Mike, and, and you, you are guilty of this. I'm pointing at you right now. Yes. The okay. show, the show is X-Men 97 and you don't have a single X-Men on our thumbnail. Back here. <laughs> uh, you have because all I'm the go- cameos that appeared I'm going in the last episode. for, I'm going for clicks, man. Yeah. Okay. If the, if these cameos were more integral to the plot, Oh, yeah. of the end of the show i i wouldn't have just so unabashedly included them on our thumbnail oh, I know. but they are but... They, they are they are the embodiment of just easter egg fun things yeah. to point at the the once upon a time in hollywood leonardo dicaprio oh, yeah. meme they, they, pointing from your couch they threw so <laughs> many at us there in that last episode in the yeah. in the art style of the 90s too which was even better i think yeah, and it's not like it wasn't things that we hadn't seen earlier in the season. Obviously, we saw Captain America, and we saw also Spider-Man, yeah. maybe in episode seven or eight, very briefly. It was before we I think saw when, the Peter Parker version on the street. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was when Magneto was doing his big old EMP, I believe. Uh, so the fact that... So all of that stuff that we saw technically could have been anything, right? Yeah. It's just we're seeing comic book characters 
drawn in a animated art style, this could be living in any universe, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that I got to see Peter Parker and Mary Jane unmistakably from the animated Spider-Man TV show just goes to tell me, since that was saved until the last episode, uh, they better... Yeah. be heavily thinking about reviving that the, show that was my childhood that was everything to me if the, they could bring yeah. back and we were trying to determine what it would be called like spider-man 98 is that yeah. what we figured yeah yeah i want spider-man 98 so bad chris and because the only thing that about that show that doesn't age super well to me in my brain is it is, the clone uh, saga the clone <laughs> saga? Because that, that no good. it's that is that Peter is constantly talking to himself because he needs to kind of narrate what's happening because he has like no other team members. So he's either quipping to himself as like a narrator or he's, uh, talking to he's nothing explaining at all. the scene yeah he's just talking out yeah loud. exactly it's a it's a thing that i hate a lot in uh anime yeah. where uh characters are constantly narrating their their thoughts and feelings so they don't have to animate them uh-huh. so if they could give it this like 10 episode a high production value appeal i mean oh my god some of the amazing animation scenes that we saw this season attributed to like a spider-man uh, character oh, yeah. ooh, man and there's so many things you could pull on now like when that spider-man show was being animated they they went pretty weird with it sometimes i mean yep. he became that living spider yep. they did a, they did clone sagas uh but they couldn't they weren't really reaching out into a lot of um until the it very was, end some of this crazy it, multiversal well, stuff was, now like all of this stuff is available to them well, it wasn't even multi it was very siloed to spider-man characters right occasionally yeah. you get like a punisher but like you know in this we saw captain america we saw 90s iron man we saw daredevil right uh we got to see alpha flight uh it was king t'chaka by the way which was an interesting thing it wasn't t'challa because it's the mm-hmm. 90s still so it was it was t'chaka interesting enough um silver samurai you know bring in the king pin again bring in the squ- bringing back all the spider-man characters i don't care how you do it right rewrite it <laughs> if you have to because i think a lot of those spider-man villains have cool power sets but like Oh, you want to have Luke Cage and Iron Fist in, in an episode? Bring them in because all they're all in New York at this point in, in the comic books. Yeah, give me like a uh, like a two parter where he teams up with Daredevil. Yeah. That would be so rad. Yeah, I mean, two characters that hire, are often paired together. Like, like, like do like even bring Jess bring Jessica Jones in in her like jewel outfit, right? Like the purple stuff because it's a cartoon. You can have fun with it. And yeah, do some wild. It's stuff. like, and this is the this is the best part and greatest advantage of this show where they can straddle these two ideas of producing a superhero story you're in a more mature animated universe Mm -hmm. so you can tell these uh more affecting stories and really lean into the life and death of it all like there are stakes involved but also you're rendering everything in flat 2d animation so if you introduce like a mysterio character right on screen I'm not going to be questioning it like, oh, well, how does Mysterio have all of these, uh, you know, powers of projection and, you know, um, putting people in this like psychedelic mist. Whereas if you do it in the MCU, you absolutely have to explain it because that's the world that they've created. Well, Exactly. You go back and look at the X-Men episode Motendo. You'd never do in that live action. You're not doing Motendo in live action. That's that's silly. But, you know, in cartoons, you know, in Spider-Man and X-Men, it works out really, really well. I will say one of the cool character evolutions in this is Jubilee doing the cool stuff with her powers, right? The fireworks, the spinning wheels. She had a, had a really good arc in this. Um, you know, uh, did I send you the photo? I, I think, I, I don't know if I sent it to you or not. The opening scene uh, credit in the, in the first episode, like, it shows, like, the humans running towards the screen away from the Sentinels. Um, mm-hmm. Those are the Sentinels they turned into... Um, the 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 super sentinels or whatever sentinel primes at the, at the mm. uh, the end of the show. I don't know if I sent. I don't think I sent that to you. Maybe I did send it to you. Um, so no, like, I don't think you did. Okay, well I'm gonna have to find this because it was a really really cool cool little like comparison. Like oh these sentinels actually um, they they've been seeding the artwork. They're seeding the uh, the show uh, with with this stuff for a while. So I really love all the deep cuts, all the Easter eggs in the show um, that they've done because. It, I don't. Is it, you can just tell when love and care goes into it, right? Like, it's not like it's a you know, hey, we just did a quick cheap cash grab to 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 do on nostalgia. Everything about the show was just firing on all cylinders, and uh, I'm glad they're at least doing a season two, maybe maybe more, maybe season three. Um, 
along the way. Is there anything you want to see in the show next that, that, that you can think of? I I know the Onslaught character, if you're familiar with the Onslaught saga. Uh-huh. So I, mm-hmm. I, I feel that's coming down the road next because he was created after the cartoon went off the air. Um, maybe even the more recent Krakoa Island of Mutant Nation, which is, uh, uh, you know, the past four or five years of comic books, they could do that. Is there anything you're, you're grabbing at here? You just want quality. You just want quality content. You don't care what it is. I think so on that, on that alive or dead board from forge. Yeah. I think was Scarlet, Witch one of the dead characters off, on there, um, uh, off world, off world, Quick, Quicksilver I would, and Scarlet, Witch were off world. I would love to see Scarlet Witch in come in and interact with Magneto in some way because that's just not something that we're really going to see organically in the MCU at any point in time. They have just not set up that that family lineage in any way. It wouldn't really make any sense for it to happen necessarily. So the kind of closest we're going to get in kind of a high-level storytelling way is going to be in X-Men 97. So I mm-hmm. would love to see... Um, uh, are they... Uh, have, have they alluded to like House of M well, happening at all no, in, in be, be, the X Men? No, because because that that came much even much later after the cartoon was off. So we could you could get maybe you know at the end of season two, the, everyone who's off world comes back for some reason, and then you get a House of M season three, even kick it off like that. Yeah, that could be crazy. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that this engine that they've created yeah. can now do and i would love that it, it, but i also i wouldn't be too shocked if there is maybe since this is officially under the marvel umbrella kevin feige executive produced i could see some things maybe being off the table right mm-hmm, you know yeah. if for some reason they are imagining like a house of m storyline in the mcu at some point in time just yeah, as an example I, I could see them going like uh maybe lean away from that we kind of want to do that i can see them saying i can see them doing that because like all this is based on so much comic books and they could do so much that they can't do in live action right okay. if they did house of m in marvel it's gonna be you know we don't have scarlet witch anymore like all the, the quicks over each other they're gonna have to recreate these characters uh you know hawkeye is a huge part of that and he, he's on his way out so i think short of mc rebooting from the get-go i think they can just have all that they want in here and even include some of those non x-men characters but that's a good thing you have 27 years of comic books now to to lean mm-hmm. back on bastion wasn't created until x-men uh the original cartoon was over so it's it's funny to have him in here as a villain because he was created after the show was over so um i don't know I, I just i just had a good time with it I, I i want more but i'm I'm glad you know we we got this kind of when we did i need 10 episodes every single year do not make me wait 18 months yeah. 15 months i need x-men yeah. i need this yeah. show running for at least five yeah. more and, seasons and i <laughs> and this can live alongside the mcu content i don't consider this mcu proper so if you have two oh, live action yeah, shows no. this you can have you can have this beside it and it'll be fine with yeah me. i don't i don't need this to cross over with what if i don't need some sort of multiversal tear to throw one of these characters into the um secret war battle that everything's yeah. building up to just this can be its own thing it's a continuation of something else that we know and love if you're going to cross over, cross over with Spider-Man 98, yeah. cross over with more uh, the, Fantastic the 90s, Four the anime 90s stuff. Animated yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah, yeah, so. Just let me live in that world. I love it. It's so warm and cozy. Yeah. Bring, bring it all back. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nostalgic. Just We always talk about the nostalgia factor. Like I want to, I would love to watch this show on my tube TV mic to see what it looks like and how that feels. Mm-hmm. That takes me back. So maybe, maybe one day. Well, that's the show for this week. We got we had a lot going on here. Um, very very excited. Glad to have you back, Mike. And we'll be back again next week. But if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? Well, they can read my web comics at liferewardsrisk.com and pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch you, where are you? You can find me on Instagram, Valdan87, V A L D A N, or Video Game Systems of the same name. If people want to know more about the show, where they can come back every week and listen to us or get merch or whatever, where can they get all them goodies at? Oh, just head on over to SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all all of our our helpful links, our awesome show notes, our upcoming release calendar, which I used myself because I had to remember, oh, when's the last time I went to the movie theater? (laughs) And I pulled up our upcoming release calendar and I went back to 2023. I was like, oh, really? Was it the Marvels? Is that really the last time? I I I saved you from Adam Webb, uh, the number two movie (laughs) on Netflix. Yeah, that's right. Yes, thank you. Bless you. Uh, Thank you for that. Um, 
Yeah. So uh, head on over to SuperheroSlate.com. Get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Uh, we love hearing from you. Uh, let us know if you've gotten your Deadpool tickets yet. Um, let us know why you didn't go see Furiosa. I'm just kind of curious to see what people's reasonings are. I'm not shaming you. I, I just want the data. And uh, Tornadoes. We love hearing from yeah, exactly. We love hearing from you. So uh, we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of Superhero Slate, so easy to do. All you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.